Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be getting ready to wear a mask all day. I have had requests from specifically a teacher, but I know there are many workplaces that are requiring you to wear a mask all day long. And when I was contemplating doing this, I've seen various versions of mask makeup. Now this is not going to be like if you occasionally have to wear a mask most of the day, or you occasionally put it on to run errands like I do. This is for those of you specifically who are going to be wearing a mask day in and day out. What do you do? All right, first step is I'm going to apply an eyeshadow primer. We are going to be wearing eyeshadow because my philosophy is if all that's going to show are your eyes, then make them something that people want to see. <laughs> so keep that in the back of your mind. The eyeshadow primer has now had a chance to dry down. So we're going to start with the eyes and finish with the face. So I'm going to be using these Kaja eyeshadow stacks today. I have several of them. BoxyCharm pop-up was having a sale and I just love these things. I think they're quick and just have some really fun color variations in each of them. Now this is the stack I'm pretty much going to be working with today. It's called Azalea and it is pinks and purples and shimmers. Don't freak out on me, stick with me here. <laughs> but I need a brow bone highlight shade. So I'm gonna go into this e.l.f. Bite Size palette and this is the, um, I always forget, cream and sugar one. So I'm just gonna go in here with my E50 and I'm going to put a good amount of this all along the brow to the top of the crease. And then I'm going to borrow one shade from another Kaja stack. This is Glowing Guava. And this first shade I think is the perfect transitional shade for what we're gonna be doing today. So taking the Morphe M504, just going to fluff a little bit of this through the crease. So now I'm gonna go into this one and we're going to apply this really bright pink shade. I'm going to stick with that brush, but really tap off and go in very, very lightly. And now I will explain. So as we're doing this, I know that there is a philosophy and I agree with you don't want to do anything that is super dark and smoky when you're wearing a mask because then it that really requires kind of more full coverage foundation, everything else to be perfected, and that's not what we're going to do. But I still believe firmly <laughs> that you can apply some really bright, fun colors on the eyes. You don't have to do pinks and purples. Um, you can do some oranges, you, could, you can do browns, but do something kind of fun. And these colors are also going to help my eye color stand out. And so again, it's going to br bring a lot more focus at the eyes. And I'm gonna go down to a Morphe M506 and into this really bright purple shade. It's so pretty, oh my goodness. And I am just going to use this right here on the outer corner. And just going to add a little bit of depth here and then I'll bring it up just slightly. Now I know as a teacher one thing that you are always trying to get kids to do is to pay attention right to look at you look at you in the face and I think this is another way to help keep their attention. Now if you are somebody who is in a different work environment um, where you're wearing a mask all day, maybe a nurse or whatever. I think it still is so fun when you see someone who actually has something colorful on their eyes. Now we're gonna go into this shimmer shade, which is in the top. And the shimmer shadows in these stacks definitely apply well with your finger. So I'm gonna start off with this and I'm putting this all over the lid. 
And then I'm gonna go into this orange blossom. I'm just giving you some different options. And this one has a little more of a peachy color on the top. I'll show you, this stack has all shimmer shades. So this would be a great companion to an all matte palette. You can just kind of have some fun with these shimmer shades. So now I'm going to actually coat my brush with that. And then I'm going to spritz it with setting spray. Okay. And this is going to help now just, it's going to dial back that pink, kind of warm it up a little bit, but it's also just going to set kind of the glitter and the sparkle in place and really just bring some nice brightness and shine to the eyes. While that finishes drying, I'm gonna go in with the Urban Decay 24 seven pencil in Love Drug. This is just a kind of warm pinky purple shade. And I'm going to put this down here along the lower lash line, going about two thirds of the way across. And then I am just kind of gently smoking that out with my finger. And then now that that shimmer shade on the lids has had time to dry, I'm just gonna go back with a little bit of this purple shade and just kind of feather that over the edge. Now for eyeliner, we're going to skip liner on the top part of the lash line, but I am going to go in and darken the lash line just a little bit on the tight line. So this is the Pixie Endless Silky Pen in Black Cocoa. And I am just going to really make sure that especially this outer half of the lash line looks a little darker and thicker at the lash line there. So if this scares you, just lay your pencil on the underside of your lashes and just pick them up with that pencil. And you'll be surprised how much you can actually get on your tight line without actually touching your eyeball. <laughs> okay, so you can see I did not take it all the way in. So I stopped about right here. Just being the perfectionist that I am, I wanna take the uh, BK Beauty 206 and a little bit of the pink shade and just kind of put this right through that top edge of the crease, just so that our glitter doesn't just stop. Okay. Now it's time to curl the lashes and then we'll finish up the rest of the face. So I'm gonna curl the lashes. I'm going to apply mascara just to the upper lashes. For today, I'm just using the Lancome Sills Booster XL, my little sample I'm using up, and the It Cosmetics Superhero, again, in a sample form. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll clean up and do the rest of the face. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of that black caviar uh, pencil to the waterline down here just into the roots of the lashes and I'm going very very lightly and I'm actually only going to go part way across and I'm just really even just tapping it a little bit into the roots of the lashes. Again, since we're not doing mascara down here, I just want to have a tiny little bit of definition. I'm gonna take the M432 from Morphe and just smudge that right into the roots of the lashes. Now it's time to address the rest of the face. So as you can see, when you've got your eyes done, it's kind of like, wait, what happened to my eyebrows? And it kind of makes the unevenness of my skin and the texture kind of stand out. Now for me personally, I used to have terrible skin. So where my skin is now, I'm very grateful for, but it is far from being perfect. And because it is oily combination, 
as the day goes on, if I don't wear anything on my skin, it gets oilier and oilier and the uneven tone of my skin changes as well. So I've tried to come up with a great solution and I think I have. So many people have talked about how you should not wear anything under your mask. It can cause acne, all of that. Well, that's great if you've got perfect skin, right? But for those of us who don't, what do you do? So I'm gonna give you an alternative. We're not wearing any foundation, but I'm gonna show you how with primer and a little bit of concealer, it can help your skin look great all day and it's not going to cause breakouts and everything. So one primer that is just amazing and it's actually good for your skin, it's doing things instantly and over time, is the Paracone Instant Blur. I got this on, I think it was through Boxy Charm, Boxy Pop Up, or something on sale, and wow, am I impressed. So you can see it is kind of like this almost like translucent balm, and it's very different than anything else I have used before. It comes with a little sponge, so that's what we're going to use to apply it. So you just press the sponge in. You want to go in lightly. You don't want to dig it in or coat your face. But what you're going to do is just go over areas of large pores. It will also help kind of blur lines as well. I'm gonna do half of my face so you can just see the difference. And I'm just pressing pressing that product in and again just a couple taps press it in and hopefully you can see a difference it just blurs things even my lines on my forehead are a lot less visible Now, if you have skin that's a little more on the dry side, another one, and I actually like this for my skin as well, it's the Professional Hydrate Primer. This really does give the skin a really nice look and glow, and it does have some moisturizing properties and some good things for your skin. So that's another option. Um, so now that you can just see, even the overall tone of my skin has evened out. I'm telling you, I know this is expensive. Go to their website. I'll leave a link to their website as well because they do have an offer, um, I think for your first time purchase, but I know it's expensive, but I just, I tell you what, and your skin does not feel silicone-y. So this is meant to either go under foundation or to be worn alone. And when I washed this off my face the other night, I was just really um, paying attention to how my skin felt and it did feel softer as it was being washed off. So there we go. All right, so we've got that down and now we're going to focus some coverage right here because our little mask is going to highlight any dark recesses of our eyes and but we don't want to go in with full coverage concealer because if you have full coverage concealer here and no foundation on it's going to look really strange <laughs> so I'm gonna start with a little corrector this is the Sephora what is this called bright future and this is the shade melon and so I'm going to use a corrector first because that allows me to do a lighter weight concealer. I'm gonna use the Morphe G2 just to kinda of tap that in. For concealer, I have two favorites that are light to medium that are great consistency. One is the Bare Minerals Bare Skin. This is a really good lighter weight and it has a little bit of kind of hydrating properties. The other one, which I'm gonna to use today is the Neutrogena Radiant Cream Concealer. And I have the shade, what shade do I have? Bisque. So it might be a tad light, but that's okay. And then while I have that out, I am also going to just add a tiny little bit here and right between the eyebrows.
And then you wanna just make sure that you don't just have this kind of stopping point there with your concealer. So we're going to just kind of blend this down into kind of this top part of our face here. I'm gonna add a little more in this inner corner and then just really kind of tap that in Now, if you have any visible spots, anything either up here for sure that you want to conceal, or if you've got some acne on your skin and you feel very self-conscious, like when you're gonna take your mask off to eat or different things and you don't want just really, really glaring spots, you know, showing. There's two concealers that I would recommend. This one is by Revolution and this is Conceal and Fix. And this actually has some salicylic acid in it. So it is meant to be a treatment for blemishes and it's a pot concealer. It does a pretty good job. It's not like complete 100% uh, full coverage, but it's a nice kind of soft texture. The other one that I actually really love too is the Too Faced, what is this called? Peach Concealer. I have the shade Cashmere. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of this just I have a spot that's actually almost completely gone now. <laughs> it was more apparent when I was testing out this makeup look the other day, but this just worked really well just to kind of conceal that. And then personally, I don't mind putting a little bit of concealer right here under my nose because that gets red. And so if I'm taking my mask off, I kind of like to not have a really bright cherry red nose. And I'm not going to put any here because your mask is just going to rub it off. And then I'll put a little on my dark spot. I'll probably rub most of this off with the mask, but hey, you know, a little bit here and there. Next, I'm going to apply a little bit of powder. Now this is the Becca Hydra Mist Powder and I just love this even over foundation, but it worked really well for me just over this primer. It has amazing like blurring properties to it, um, but it doesn't look like just super powdery on the skin and it does not have talc in it. so. I don't know, this is a powder that just works well for me and I really do feel like it continues to help with the blurring of everything. So I'm going to use just this e.l.f. kind of beauty sponge to apply that. And you'll see this is just going to further kind of, it is going to mattify things, but it's a hydrating powder so it does also work for those of you who have dry skin as well. Okay, the final touch before lips, yes, we're gonna do something with our lips, is eyebrows. Because you can see, even though our skin has been evened out, our eyes are done, something still looks off and that's because we really need some definition. We need a frame around our artwork here on our eyes. So we're going to just go in with a, an eyebrow pencil. Now I am actually going to skip eyebrow gel because again, just like kind of with the eyes skipping the lower lash mascara dials back the drama a little bit. I feel like if your brows are too perfect and plastered on, then it looks a little odd not to have contour and all of that stuff going on. So I'm gonna take, this is just the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in Ash Brown and just going to fill in like I normally do. All right, so our frame is done. Now let's just add a little brightness on the inner corner of the eye. I'm gonna go back to this e.l.f. cream and sugar palette and use that nice bright shade there just to bring a little added brightness here on the inner corner. Now we're gonna address the lips. So I've just had some Buxom lip gloss on my lips as I was getting ready. I'm gonna tap that off. Now I'm going to go around the edge of my lips with the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. I'm gonna use a brush to do this because I wanna be a little more precise.
Okay, so what that paint pot does is it just kind of gives my lips a cleaner edge and it also helps keep lip liner in place longer. So I'm going to actually add lip color depending on your style of mask, um, depends on how much room you have there. Now I know some masks are flat up against your lips and those I don't think you can do anything other than just a little chapstick. But for me, the, even these disposable ones, I actually bend it out and I actually can wear regular lipstick with this. I just make sure that it stays away from my lips. So depending on your style of mask is going to determine what you do, but I'm gonna give you kind of a couple of options. So first of all, we're going to just use a lip liner and I'm going to use one that I know does not Fudge at all. So that is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat. I'm going to use the shade 2 medium, uh, 2 Pillow Talk medium. And then I'm going to just lightly fill in the rest of the lip and kind of press it in. My lips are still moisturized from that Buxom lip gloss. And there you go. You can see just that little bit of color on the lips. So when you take your mask off to eat, you still, it looks like you've done something, but it's not overly bright. It's not dramatic. And as I said, once it sets, it's not going to be like smearing all over your face under your mask. Now, if, like my mask, I know there's even ones that come out farther. If you have more room for lipstick or lip gloss, you could add even just a nice hydrating kind of tinted balm. This is one from Milk Makeup. I just got this. It's in the shade Canatonic and it's a really pretty rose shade. Um, something like this, if you just tap it on your lips and then you can always blot off the excess, but you definitely don't want anything too goopy or anything just in case your mask tends to kind of maybe brush your lips or something. So this would be kind of my completed look. And then, like I said, I bend my mask, shape it, Put it on and now we have these really pretty sparkly eyes and it looks like I'm put together but I don't have to worry about the mask putting indentations in my bronzer or contour or anything I'm also not worried about my skin kind of you know melting down foundation under there all day so um, yeah this is what I would do personally. And again, you can always change out those eye shade colors to whatever you're comfortable with. But you can just see by adding a little sparkle and by just kind of perfecting how the skin looks there, you look like you're put together and you look like you're ready to have some fun and meet the day. So, so and then when you take your mask off to eat, You've got kind of some lip color there. Again, you're not having to worry about um, kind of wear, wear down on your makeup anywhere funny. And then what I would do personally, if you had plans to go out after work, um, I would put this in my purse. This is the Nude Sticks Bloom, the Nudies Bloom. Uh, for this eye look, I've chosen the shade Cherry Blossom Babe. <laughs> Fun, right? It's a really pretty, just gentle pink color. I'll show you this in a moment, but it has a little brush. So now if I were going out, all I would need to do is just take a little bit of this. I'm gonna to try to just use the, <laughs> the camera here as my mirror. I would just tap a little bit of this on my cheeks. Um, if I wanted to, I can use the brush and this brush is actually nice and soft. I kind of find my fingers work a little quicker. But you can see, it would just add a nice little bit of pink to the cheeks. And then let's just add a little on our lips here. And 
there you go. Just by those two simple steps with one product, you kind of look like you're freshened up and livened up and ready to go. And if you get really super oily through the day, you could bring your little powder puff and just kind of powder through the center. If you wanted to bring your mascara, just add a little to the lower lashes you could, but just even as is with that little bit of color on the cheeks and added lip color, I think you're ready to go out for the evening. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. For those of you that love makeup like I do and just have been kind of frustrated knowing what you should or shouldn't do with a mask on all day and kind of hearing, well, if you wear a mask all day, you shouldn't do anything on your eyes. Hopefully I gave you some new tips of some fun things to try. And again, I would really encourage you have some fun with your eyes because that is the only thing that people are seeing. So give them something fun to look at. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, that it was helpful for you. Please make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye.